All right, welcome back to the next section of the Excel 2010 for Power Users course. In the previous section, we talked about pivot tables, and specifically, we talked about calculations inside those pivot tables. These weren't calculations that lived inside of the source data, but those were calculations that we derived, that we created based on the source data. We're going to continue the discussion on pivot tables during this section, but we're going to be getting into pivot table templates. Now, pivot table templates, they're a bit different than what you may have experienced as just Excel templates. There's not really an actual feature built into Excel called Save Pivot Table as a Template. Now, you'll see that with the workbook, you'll see that with charts, but there's not an actual feature Save Pivot Table as a Template. What we're going to take a look at here is after you've spent a bit of time, whatever it is, a half hour, a few hours, maybe generating a pivot table, formatting it, making it look pretty, got your slicer out there, got charts based off of it and so on. Uh, we don't want to have to reinvent the wheel again the next time we get a new set of data to accomplish all those same features again. I don't want to have to reformat the data, bring my slicer back out, create the chart again, uh, but I'm just going to utilize a prior pivot table, the one where I already did all that work, and then just change the source data. So this is where we're going to consider a pivot table template. We're going to build a pivot table, get it to look just the way that we want it to, all the little bells and whistles included, and then the next time we have a new set of data come along, the next year's data comes, the next months, the next quarters, whatever it might be, the next time we have to change our source data and create a new pivot table, we'll just go back to our original one, change its source data, just point it to the new data source. But we'll consider that our template. So here's how you do it. So don't reinvent the wheel, build the original one, you got it down, save that off, new data comes in, open up the original one, change its source, point it to the new data. So here we go. So open in front of me, I've, I've got one of the example files that is gonna be stored within these uh, videos that you're going through. This one's called pivot table templates.xlsx. So if you wish to follow along, feel free to crack that open for me. Uh, or I'll give you a moment uh, before we move into our next uh, objective uh, to spend a bit of time getting in there and, and playing around with what you learned here going through the videos. So I've got the example file open in front of me. I'm going to make sure I click into it. By clicking into my pivot table here, uh, up above top of the screen, we'll notice that I've got my uh, context sensitive tabs that have opened up for me. I've got my pivot table tools with the options and design tab there. I'm going to move to the options tab for just a moment. And I'm going to open the field list back up. I'm going to close this, but just open it up for just a moment, just to help identify what we've got happening inside this pivot table. So this pivot table is currently taking advantage of a, a few fields. And these fields, year, month, type, and so on, these are coming from a tab down below called sales data. Now on this sales data sheet, I've got a number of records. It's 400 plus records here. But I've got years of 2004, 2005, and then a, a set of records for 2006. There we go. So we're a bit outdated in data here. But this current pivot table here, sales pivot table, is currently taking advantage and consuming that data. You can see here inside of my year slicer, where I can filter the table based on year, I've got 2004, 2005, and 2006, representing that data that we were just looking at. Now let's imagine, we've spent all this time getting here and formatting this data. I'm gonna close the pivot table field list for just a moment. So we've, we've got it formatted, I've added blue color, I've got the, the um, horizontal lines in there to help separate the values. I've formatted the numeric data as currency, now, I've spent a bit of time getting in here and formatting this data. And I've also activated this slicer so I can start filtering this pivot table based on year. Okay. Clear that out. Now, the next set of years comes along. This is going to be represented by the sales data new tab down below. On this sheet, I've got the same bit of data. I've got year, month, type, and so on. But I've got different years. I've got 2012. 2013, and then one more, 2014. 
Okay, so this is our new set of data now coming in. We now need to report off of this data. Now, I don't want to spend all the time that I did prior building a new pivot table, formatting that pivot table, and so on. Right? That takes a little bit of time out of my day where I can be spending it uh, maybe more effectively in some other area. I just want to want to use the same pivot table, the same structure, the same formatting, but with my new data source. This is a quick one. Like I mentioned earlier, there's not an actual save as save pivot table as template feature. It doesn't exist inside of Excel 2013 or, or excuse me, 2010. It doesn't even live inside the newest edition, which is 2013 at the time of this recording. So what we're going to do is just simply create the original one. It's already there. I've already got it. You got it inside the example file. And I'm just going to change its source. I'm going to point it to the new data source. So click into my table. Doesn't matter where, just as long as I'm in that pivot table. I'll go up to the options tab, top of the screen. On the options tab, you got a section of tools here called data. And one of them being change data source. So I'm just going to hop into change data source. I'll go to change data source. This so opens up my little change data source for my pivot table window. Right now, currently, it's pulling from the sales data, which is my, my current worksheet that I'm, uh, I'm, my pivot table is currently pulling from. I've got A4 to H448 in there. Now, all I'm going to do is just hop over to the new sheet where my new data source lives, and I'm going to make sure I grab the data source from here. I'm going to get from A1. I'm going to do a, a keyboard shortcut here. Control shift down arrow, select that entire column. Control shift right arrow. Let's grab that entire set of data. So now I've, I've changed the current pivot table, its data source. It's now looking at the sales data new A1 to H445. And I'll hit OK. And I'm done. I've got the new data in. I've just applied my previous pivot table to this new data source. You'll notice inside my slicer, I'm no longer seeing 2004, 5, and 6, but I've now got the new years, 2012, 13, and 14. So not much to it. You've spent all this time building up this super awesome pivot table, right? All this formatting down inside there. you got a slicer. Maybe there's a chart included. Uh, the next time the data source comes along or a new data source comes along, don't reinvent it. Don't rebuild the pivot table. Just change its data source. And remember... Just click into the pivot table, go to options, underneath data, change data source, change the data source, and just point to the new data source. It's as easy as that. And you've just saved all this time. No longer do you have to sit down and reinvent the wheel and recreate anymore. Just point it to the new data source. So take a moment, try it out. Pause the video, stop it. Jump out to the exercise file. Remember, it's the pivot table templates.xlsx document. Jump into the sales pivot table. Take a look at what we have there first. Make sure we're understanding the pivot table itself. And then change its data source to point it to the new data source.